So, um, you know, you, you feel like you got uh, an edge on him, and then he finds a way to, to battle his way back in there and has, has done a good job of, of playing the football, you know, when it's in the area. How do you guys go about incorporating stuff that's, that's an adjustment from last year? I know Mike doesn't like to talk directly about stuff from last year, but when you have stuff schematically or mistakes that were made last year, are they just weaved into to this year's playbook, the, the corrections, or do you talk directly about that stuff? Was that done previously? How, how do you go about that? Yeah, you know, we, we finished the, the year off, come in in the spring and, and go through uh, things we did well last year, things we didn't do well, and, and things we want to improve upon. So, you know, some of that is conceptually, some of that is is on a personal level, whether it's myself or, or another player, um, kind of evaluating that, and then as we move forward, um, making those adjustments, if it's conceptual, making those adjustments in the playbook and weaving it in, you know, into the installs in the spring and then now carrying it out onto the field. Does he ever say, like, we did this and we need to do that, or does he kind of avoid talking about last year, maybe ex with the exception of, like, specific film against an, a common opponent? Yeah, we don't, we don't look back a whole lot in, in reference, reference things in the past, good or bad. Um, but, we, you know, we, we have those lessons and, and we have the coaching points. You know, we don't have to specifically attach them to a play or – or situation, but we have the coaching points that we gathered through those processes and, and can add them on now. What do you think about Chig, I guess, from a maturity level, and, and what have you maybe seen from him, you know, first couple of months on the job? I'm excited about Chig. He, he's a talented player. He's, he's fast. He's physical. Uh, he seems to, uh, to enjoy the game and love playing the game, so I'm having a lot of fun, you know, getting to know him and, and his game. Obviously, I think he's going gonna to help us out a lot. You know, he's, uh, he's young, so just like all the rookies, just kind of pick things up and, and figure it out as he goes. But um, he's doing a really good job of, of jumping in and doing everything we ask him to do. So excited about him, and hopefully he can continue to progress. Last year, you threw, last year you threw five picks in the first five days of practice, no picks so far in any of the team periods. What's the difference? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm not going to get into last year or anything like that. You know, just uh, trying to be smart with the ball. You know, um, you know sometimes in practice, you're, you're pushing the limits, right? I mean, that's that's the point of practice, especially early on in training camp and, and the spring is you're kind of pushing the limits and seeing where you can put the ball and if you can fit it in there, what what catch radius guys have and, and things like that. But but it's a balance. You know, you want to be smart. You know, today we're down in the red zone, so you know, want to play situational ball there a little bit and, and be smart with the football and not put the ball in, in harm's way. Um, but you know, we just know as, as quarterbacks that it's our job to try to take care of the football and, uh, and put it in a good spot. So we want to train, train those good habits as we go. What have you seen out of Phillips? Malik, sorry. <laughs> how, how, have you seen Malik come up, how have you seen Malik come along early in training camp? Um, you know, I'm excited to be working with Malik, and he's done a good job of, of trying to do what we're asking. Um, you'll have to ask Pat or, or Todd or, or Coach Vrabel, you know, on evaluating him. Um, but I enjoy working with him. You know, he's a really good, really good dude. Uh, he's coming with a great attitude and, and is trying to get better. So, uh, you know, from my seat, that's all you can ask for. How do you see Robert Woods come in and Phillips be a leader within the, within the team? <laughs> all right, you're first, you're second. Sorry. Right. What have you seen out of Phillips' game so far that you like? I know that you haven't probably gotten a lot of reps with him in terms of team and that sort of thing, but what have you seen out of him? Yeah, he's a shifty player, obviously. Uh, shifty, speedy, um, has done a good job in the slot for us of finding ways to get open. You know, had a rep, I think it was Saturday, um, versus man coverage, was able to lose his defender at the top and, and win by, you know, seven yards. So uh, I think Logan was, was taking that rep with him. But uh, he's done some really good things and excited to see, you know, hopefully continue. He's starting to get those reps with me now. So hopefully we can build that relationship and continue to progress, you know, with the one group. With Robert Woods, have you seen him come in and just kind of be a leader within that receiver group? Yeah, no doubt. Robert's a leader. You know, he comes in, he has a presence about him, and, and has done it for a long time. So guys respect him, and he's a really good, really good dude. Um, you know, as we as we grow our relationship on the field, you know, just getting used to to what he does well, and and um, he's so smooth. That, that's one thing I notice uh, immediately is he's so smooth with his routes. He's able to transition really well, and um, you know, it looks like he's going 100 percent, but he's not, and he's able to transition extremely well. So for a quarterback, that makes it easy to throw the ball to him. I know you're not a doctor, but are you impressed with just like how quickly he's been able to come and, and be up to speed? Yeah, you know, just going back to the spring, you know, see him kind of building up, and then you know, weren't really sure what his what his plan was going to be as we came into into fall camp. So, you know, excited that he's able to get out there, get some really good work uh, in the in the seven on sevens and the and the team periods. When you're with somebody like Phillips, and, and you haven't thrown that much to him up to this stage, but you're able to to recite the details of a rep he had with Logan, how closely are you watching? reps that guys have with the other two quarterbacks and, and how important is that to know 
those reps as well as you know the reps that you've had? Yeah, no doubt it's huge. You know, whether it's Kyle or, or any of the guys, I'm, I'm constantly watching, you know, the way guys run routes. They might have not even got the ball. They might have been a backside route on a basic or something, and the ball didn't come their way. But I try to, on tape, just go back and, and watch their body language, see their, their movement at the top of the route. And if a guy's consistently winning, even if he's not getting the football, you know, you remember that as a quarterback. So it gives you a lot of confidence, you know, if you do get an opportunity to play with that player, that, uh, that they have an opportunity to win. Last year was a grab bag for you on who you were going to throw to every day in practice. You just didn't know who was going to be out there. How big has it been for you to have all your guys every day so far? That's nice. You know, um, you know, so early, so we're only a few days in here at this point. Hopefully, we can keep everybody on the field. You know, that's the plan. I think coach has done a done a good job and been intentional about um, about the way practice is structured and, and trying to make sure guys have an opportunity to recover and 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 be out there. Because at the end of the day, we want to have all our guys out there and give ourselves the best chance to win. So yeah, it's been really nice having having our guys out there. Back to what you said about the uh, about watching guys routes. Do you? Put more, more or less emphasis on what type of period it is, whether it's a route in a team period or a seven-on-seven seven or a one-on-one? -on -one? Um, they all matter. You know, obviously it's all a little bit different, but um, no, I don't put a whole lot of, as, as I'm looking at an individual route, you know, if, if it's a competitive period, whether it's one-on-one, seven-on-seven or, or team, you know, for that player, that's a that's a one-on-one -on -one situation. So definitely um, just take it for what it is, and it's a competitive period and a one-on-one -on -one rep. So it doesn't really matter what, what period it is. How do you feel about the offense's performance today with the pads on? I don't think it was clean enough. You know, we had, had some opportunities, had some uh, some drop passes, um, just some situations where, where we weren't playing clean enough. You know, we got to play clean football down in the red zone. Uh, I think we had one group, you know, have some movement before the snap. And, um, you know, we know that kills that kills drive. So we know offensively we got to be really, really clean down in the red zone, um, clean on the details. Every inch matters if we're running the football. You know, if we can push the pile for an extra yard, that's going to be huge. And we have an opportunity to, to make a play in the pass game, whether it's the throw, whether it's the catch, whether it's the protection. You know, we have to be able to make it. Is that something that's kind of expected day one with the pads on, not being as clean, or are the expectations higher than that? <laughs> um, I expect to go out there and execute no matter what situation. It's obviously, you know, it's a little bit of an adjustment with the pads on. Everyone's, everyone's adjusting a little bit, but there's no excuse there. You know, we, we expect to go out. And, and execute no matter you know whether it's helmets, whether it's uppers, whether it's full pads. Um, so you know, look forward to uh, to making these corrections. You know, I, th I thought we did a lot of good stuff too. It wasn't just like you know everything was bad out there. You know, we had some really good operational things that, that I was proud of our guys and checks that I made that the guys were able to uh, to jump on board with um, things that may not show up from a distance, but uh, it's progress, right? I've seen progress from from last week and coming out here first day with the pads on. It's different for those guys, but they were still able to make the mental steps forward. So. Um, a lot of good stuff out there today, just we have high expectations. We want to go out there and execute at an extremely high level, so got to get some things cleaned up. So you guys spending extra time with Chig and Hoop and, and Steckel, being intentional about working on timing with them, different things like that. How do you feel like your relationship with them has grown since they first got in here, and do you think they can bring something to this offense that maybe wasn't here in previous years? Yeah, no doubt. You know, tight ends are going to be huge for us. Um, especially the guys we got. I'm excited about the guys that we have. We have some playmaking ability, some size and, um, and length out there. So if we can do some things that, that play to those guys' skill sets, especially when we get down here in the red zone, having those big targets that with length and size is, is going to be fun for us. Um, things speed up a little bit, you know, I think, um, the D lines geeked up to, to rush. So when you're in team periods, you know, things ha are happening a little bit faster up front. Things are a little bit more physical down the field with, with receivers getting jammed and, and stuff like that. So, um, I wouldn't say it's a night and day difference, but, uh, there definitely is a difference just as far as the, the fluidity of the, of the offense when the pads come on. Oh, it's huge. I'm excited. You know, when you have guys that are young and come in, here we are just a few days into camp and they're competing. They're, they're doing what we're asking them to do and, and getting accustomed to the way we play ball around here. Uh, it really makes you just smile and think like, OK, if, if we can get these guys and keep them on the path that they're on as they continue to progress, uh, they're going to help us out a lot this year. What changes have you seen Des Fitzpatrick from year one to year two? And 
How's it kind of manifested itself out here so far? Yeah, Des has made a lot of strides. I mean, it's, I mean, it's fun to, to see a guy who um, just has grown so much, you know, over the past year. You know, kind of came in last year and maybe didn't have the camp he wanted to and then progressed throughout the season last year, really got a lot better. It was fun to watch him make plays, uh, you know, in practice, and he's kind of translated that um, into this year. You know, he's on top of all the details now. You know, you ask him a, a question in the meeting, he, he's on top of everything. So it uh, gives the quarterback a, a lot of confidence to know that, um, a guy is going to nail all the details mentally, and then also he's being able to do it physically. So excited to see you know the progress he's made. Pads, how did it feel? Felt good. Um, you know, being you know since the last time we actually had pads on was that Bengals game, and you know just to be out here, um, everyone called it real football. But you know, for the guys in the trenches, the way we've been practicing without pads has been the same with pads on. So, but it was good to see guys you know um, thudding up today. So you know, just keep building on that. We see you talking a lot. You said you lost a little bit. Have you noticed any more? Yeah, I mean, I, I, not even now. I think it just, you know, normally, especially, you know, we always talk about like, you know, especially football players, we, we get camp legs, you know, stuff like that. And and um, I would say like this camp here, I haven't been feeling like real sluggish. You know, my legs haven't been getting heavy real quick. But, um, you know, I've been feeling good um, just running around, running to the ball, you know, just getting myself prepared for, you know, later on. Um, but, it, you know, of course, we're taking it day by day. But, you know, just the weight, you know, trying to be consistent with that, that's going to help me out in the future. So. I've seen you working with DeMarcus some. What, what are your early impressions of him and what he could do for this team? He's going to be a big help for us, uh, um, especially up front. You know, just his play style. You know, he know what type of guy he is, and um, you know his effort. You know, that's what we build our team about, um, our team on, and um, you know the the way he runs to the ball, the way he, you know, carry himself, especially in um, you know when it's time for team period. You know, he one of them guys that I know we'll be able to count on uh, when it's time. We'll see you talking a lot throughout practice. Is that something like you do to kind of generate energy within yourself, or, or what's what's the cause of that? Um, I mean. It's, it's, to me, it's, you know, we, we do that, and you know, it's not just me. You know, you see guys like KB, and I think when you, when you as a leader, you know, you're bringing that type of energy on the field, that's, that's kind of setting the tone, and other guys going uh, to follow up with that. So I think us keep bringing energy like that each and every day, you know, that just showing that, you know, not, not just when things are going bad for us, I mean, good for us, also when things are going bad for us, you know, if the offense score, we're still going to be trying to talk because that's the whole point of this game, you know. You're going to have them peers where offense gets the best of us and we get the best offense sometimes. But, you know, just trying to um, not be a front runner, as Coach Vray call it. And, um, you know, that's just something um, me personally, I try to work on myself, especially, you know, when in, um, getting into the season. You know, I mean, everybody want to win every game, but sometimes, I just, I mean, we know from the past years that we're not going to win every game in this league. So, you know, just me being a leader, how can I cannot keep, you know, standing in the front and keep that energy up high, on, especially on defense. Jeff, how much have you gone against maybe Aaron Brewer, and what do you see out of a guy who's trying to earn a job there at the left guard spot? Um, I go against Brewer every day. Um, you know, I think, and now, um, Coach, I saw what Coach Ray said about the two dollar state thing. Um, but, you know, I. And I, I agree with that. You know, Brewer one of the, you know, he's not the biggest guy. You everyone knows Brewer not big, especially playing a guard position. Because I done went against a lot of bigger guards, but um, he got a heart of a line, and I, and that's the type of guy. That's the type of things we need on the offensive line. Just his grit. You know, he have a lot of grit, and you know, it's gonna come. Like today, you know, we had, you know, we're gonna get the best, um, best. You know how they always say iron shop iron, iron. So me going against Brewer, getting them better. Him, you know, I'm going against him. I'm getting better as well. So, like I said, each and every day, you know, he gave him his all. You know, he's going to try to finish me or whatever it may be. But, um, like I said, I think he's going to be a big help for us up front. And, I, you know, each and every day I could tell just even though today was our first day of pass, you know, he have gotten better from, you know, just the first day we've been out here. So, you know, I, I like Brew, um, especially up on the offensive line. I think he's going to be a big help for us up front. What is that size like to go against, though, when you've gone against – Bigger guys before and a smaller guy. Is it harder? Is it easier? What's that like? Yeah, I mean, it's playing, um, especially defensive line, man. Um, you know, that's one of the things, you know, I was working in individually, and we talk about pad level. And um, things like that right there helping us 
you know, work on our technique. You know, um, sometimes we might play against six five guards or whatever it may be. Brew, of course, is not six five, so that's helping us. You know, keep your pad level down, come off the ball at a you know good pad level, so we're able to get under guys like Brew. Because if you don't, you know, that's his advantage, and everyone have a type of advantage that they could use playing this game, and that's Brew use could use that as advantage, and we just gotta adapt to it and um, come off uh, with a good pad level. Things, Jeff, that you maybe focus sure. on during the individual drills during periods that can make you better uh, this year. Um, and that's that's one thing. Um, you know, my pad level. Um, you know, being consistent with my pad level, trying to be consistent just with my effort. You know, technique, my hands. No matter what we're doing, you know, keeping my hands tight. You know, um, it's just be the small things, especially when we under the shoot. You know, doing get off my first step, not taking like the little baby steps or whatever it may be. And um, I think Coach T, you know, he he um, teaching that. You know, um, when you're getting off under the shoot, explode out things like that. And then when we get on the sled, you know. How fast can I get my um, hands from the ground to the man and basically the sled? So just the hand speeds and all that. How much does a guy like Tart factor in when other guys go in and clean up things because he's clogged up something or blown something up in the middle? I mean, that's what we need. Um, that's what that's our job to be disruptive up front. You know, having him, you know, um, being disruptive right there over the um, ball. You know, that's going to be huge for us, especially on the defensive side. So I think just by him, like we had a great play today, where you know I think he won inside right now, and uh, me just working off him. So like I said, things like that. You know, it may go unnoticed at times, but him just you know clogging up that middle could make the ball bounce all the way outside. So I think you know having him inside, you know, especially. You know, being consistent with that is going to be huge for us. Jeff, a lot of these words on the fences and stuff are, are words, variables used a lot, teamwork, finish, detail. Full tilt seems new. I'm just curious if that's... It's not new. Um, that's No, that's not new. That's um, something uh, we've been um, in, thrilled, I mean, instilling our defense, full tilt to the tackle. And, um, you know, that's one of our keys, effort and finish. And he'll ask the question every day, how do we define it on defense? And that's full tip to the tackle, all 11 to the ball, full tip. So it's not new. How many different nicknames people give you over the years from the time you were a kid? And, and is Big Jeff the one that's, that stuck? Yeah, I mean, I really didn't have too many nicknames. Um, I think Big Jeff's been the newest one, uh, true enough. But I think this this one is going to stick with me. Uh, I even got some uh, thigh pads with him, especially when I wear white pants, you probably can see them. But, I think that's one of the names that you know, kind of just is instilling me now. So, who called, who called you that for the first time? I can't remember. <laughs> I just they start calling me Big Jeff, and that's what we go with. How'd you get? The, who did the thought pass for you? Um, it was some guy. Um, actually, Bud put me in contact with him, and I, mean, I think I think he make a lot of guys thought pass like that across the NFL. So. Robert Woods, Farley, both out there and taking another step in their recovery. Well, I mean, it's just another. Step. I don't think that, you know, really it wasn't, I didn't give it much thought. I just want to make sure that what they're doing is um, is helping them and that they're progressing and they keep um, responding well to the work that they're doing. And then, you know, I, I think that there's a, pretty much a full workload. You know, there's a couple of drills that they're not doing, but um, we've known that for a while. McCrary gets his hands on four or five different passes today. Does that make you eager to want to go see the film of him today to see how he did it and, and what he's improved on? Well, I know how. I mean, I know how he did it. He's competitive. He's, um, yeah, usually usually on body. Um, kind of a lot of the same things that we saw in the evaluation process. We can continue to learn, and um, you know, he's a, he, he rarely makes the the same mistakes twice. He's a very coachable player and. It's good to see him, uh, you know, disrupt the football. In general, what did you see from the, the big guys in the trenches with, with the first day in, in, in pads? Uh, you know, I mean, we'll, I'll take a look at it here in, you know, on film. But, you know, there were some good runs and um, some, you know, some, some leakage. And then, you know, sometimes guys getting in the middle of the pocket. I thought the defense did a nice job, you know, in the red zone. I apologize. That's okay. Ryan talked about, um, though he's not throwing the Phillips that much, seeing what he's doing in reps with the other two quarterbacks and that kind of influencing his thinking about him at this stage. How much can a guy sway the quarterback in, in reps that he's not even having with the Well, I think the quarterbacks obviously watch every single rep and they watch and see who's open. You know, they know who's open. And sometimes, um, you know, we tell those, you can't control when you get the football. You can just control um, – 
you know, if you're open or not. And then whether you turn and finish if you don't get the football. And, and Kyle's trying to do that, and he's trying to get open. And, you know, sometimes we get him the ball, and sometimes, you know, the quarterback doesn't. So um, th that's what I think the quarterbacks see is, man, these guys are winning. And um, you know how quick and decisive I think sometimes you have to be, especially down in the red zone. So, you know, you look one way, and, and you're thinking that you like a matchup. And, um, you know, I'm sure that they'll – They'll have plenty of opportunities to, to hook up with each other. How's he doing? And do you think he'll see some higher ranking quarter corners, maybe, Kyle? Um, well, I mean, it is what it is inside. You know, it's, a, it's usually going to get the nickel. You know, he's going to get the nickel. And, you know, wherever that matchup lies, I think that, you know, it's early on. He's doing a nice job catching punts and, you know, like you said, winning and, <clears throat> and getting open. One thing in particular you, you talked to receivers about, like at the top of routes. Trying to get separation, but you don't want to be too out. Yeah, the extended two-hand push is going to be something that, you know, especially going away from the, the football um, or, excuse me, coming back towards the football is going to be something that they're going to see, and that, that one usually gets um, called. You know, I just think trying to be, you know, as physical as you can, working your, working your flipper, working your pad level. Um, you know, some of the big guys playing big, some of, some of the smaller guys maybe trying to avoid some of that contact. Um, but but right now, I think that we're going to try to err on the side of being aggressive and then being able to dial back based on what they're calling. Roots have a propensity for that, maybe? Which one? Just the, yeah. oh, I think that would be an example of us trying to say be physical at the top, and then now we have to dial them back down and saying, okay, these are things that they're going to call. But I've said it since I've been here that I was going to take the first offensive pass interference down the field. Like, just if they're going to – grab and, you know, play physical against us. I want guys to, um, you know, play physical as well. And then if they call it, I'll say, okay, that, that's on me and let's dial it back. With Burks and McQuarrie, uh, we're seeing them a lot. One -on -one. We're seeing Burks and McQuarrie a lot going against each other one-on-one. -on -one. Is that intentional? And what are some of your takes? On well, I think everything's intentional out there. I think whether we expect that or they, they want to do that, I think that they understand um, – you know, both young players, both looking to define a role here through the training camp, um, and, and that they want to compete against each other and and try to make each other better. Um, for the Tampa Bay practice and and Arizona, what, what, what do you want to hear from them, or like what it, like what what do you want to know from them? Well, we talk strongly game? about the idea between points of emphasis and and basically some clarification, right? We'd rather. Um, would likely do away with the points of emphasis. We'd like to emphasize the rules and not just specific ones so that, you know, if <clears throat> human nature says, well, if the league wants us to emphasize this, maybe we should call it more. That's not what I, it's not what I want as a head coach on uh, somebody that's, you know, on the competition committee. I think we should have some clarification on what, what offensive holding is and where we want to call it so that you can start to build some consistency between each crew uh, week in and week out. I think that's the most important thing. So talk to them about the, the clarification, about some of the things that we've we talked through the off season. Uh, I want them to meet with our players. I want them to be in meetings. I want them to watch practice. I want there to be dialogue between the officials <clears throat> and the players. I want the players to understand uh, how they need to talk to these officials during a game if something's going on. Sometimes our interior linemen get held, you know, trying to get to the second level. Um, they need to know who they need to go and talk to. There's only one official that can call it, um, the deep judge, and <clears throat> need to go explain to him. He can't complain to anybody else. There's only one guy to tell. So just a lot of those intricacies on, on the rules and who's calling what and what each official's mechanics are, I think that can help the players. What do you stress and what do you want your position coaches to harp on during these uh, individual periods that we see out here each day? Well, fundamentals are critical. I, I would like to try to have a football team that – is, is strong fundamentally, that, that plays with the correct technique, uh, and then obviously the effort. Those are things that, um, that we'd like to see come out of those individual drills. We want to have great fundamentals and techniques. And, you know, sometimes there's things you do every single day. Uh, we call those developers. And then sometimes there's specific drills based on um, a new coverage going in or, you know, maybe the offense is, you know, putting in some, some zone read plays that you have to – you know, do some different things, you know, specifically and not something that you do every day. So there's everyday developers and then sometimes the specific things that they add each day. What are the advantages of the length that you guys have on defense when you're working stuff like speed to power? 
Well, speed, you know, I mean, it, it helps you get, get on the guy before, um, you know, he's maybe ready or he's, you know, put his feet in the ground. Um, we would like to teach it properly. You know, that's something that they're looking at, the use of the helmet, you know. Sometimes that guys have a tendency to get their head in and, and be in a linear position. We would like to lead with our hands and our, and our face um, and, and making sure that uh, we're continuing to run our feet, um, you know, on contact to try to, you know, once these tackles get moving, if you can, you know, come back and, and, and put the, you know, your momentum back towards the quarterback. You know, I like to talk about last year. I'm wondering how you incorporate things you want to be different from last year, maybe things that didn't go the way you wanted into Not talking action. about last year? Yeah, but how do you change? Um, just saying that that's, you know, I mean, I think we can learn from those things and just saying, um, you know, where we were in the red zone or what we did. I, you know, we, 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 were, we had um, nine situations, I try to tell the team, we had nine situations uh, where we were third and goal last year, which I, I didn't, that doesn't seem like a lot compared to some of the other teams that I started to watch, I guess. So, we're just pretty efficient on first and second down. Um, but we scored on six of those nine. And on, a, on another one, we got a, a DPI. And I think that that's a pretty good number. We scored on those. And the plays that we scored on were, were stuff that we ran in OTAs. It was a consistent theme of things that you know, we had a lot of confidence in and a lot of um, a work on. Um, and so the message is you know, all these reps that we had and that were base fundamentals, it wasn't like we scored on scheme plays. We scored on plays that, you know, we had been running throughout, you know, training camp and the ones that we, you know, a lot of those that we were going to run today and, and this week. How about something on the other side, something that you think? Yeah, probably, not, you know, I mean, I just think it's, um, you know, whether it's ball disruption or, you know, getting beat inside. I mean, some of these things you don't have to revert back to last year. It's just kind of how we want to teach them. I mean, we've seen Ryan throw a pick. Uh, so far in camp, uh, he looking particularly. Uh, I mean, I, I think he's been pretty decisive, and I think he's been accurate. I think there's some throws today. I'm sure he'd like to have back. I mean, that may. Um, hopefully, that's just kind of being down in the red zone for the first time, and um, you know, it, it's early, but I, I obviously think that that's a. a, a Step in the right direction is how we want to practice. He didn't think that today's practice, he didn't think that the offense played clean. What was your kind of evaluation, knowing that you're evaluating both the offense and the defense? Yeah, it's hard to have both of them have a good day. That's that's kind of tough. So um, it's probably, the you know, that's, that's pretty probably factual, just the fact that, um, you know, I don't think seven on seven was as good. When That's a, that's a, that's a drill we expect the offense to, to really um, excel in with no pass rush. And, um, you know, good plays on both sides. Um, I think we can learn from, you know, that third group. You know, talk to Malik about stringing some really good plays, some positive plays. You know I mean? Just put some positive plays together down in the red zone, taking care of the football. They did that on two plays. Um, you know, the third down play, we, we move, which, you know, then wanted to make sure they knew that that was going to be third and ten. Talk to him about taking care of the football in this situation. Like, we've got three points. Let's not try to force something here. I want him to understand what I'm thinking as a head coach in that situation. You know, third and 10 early in the game on the 15-yard line. Like, okay, we made one mistake. Let's not make another. And then the snap's low, and then we, you know, takes a sack, which I'd rather take a sack than, you know, throw an interception, what have you. But we can at least teach from that and just say, hey, listen, we had two positive plays, and then let's let's look and see how this, this third down play um, – Developed. I was wondering about like Traylon and, and Roger, and I'll start shaking now. How encouraging is it to have the rookies kind of being impactful this early in camp and like being up to speed? Understand? Yeah, the, the better they do the, and the more reps that they earn and just continue to try to define their role, you know, we put them in there. The more that they can handle and the more that they um, take advantage of the opportunities that they get, uh, they earn more opportunities. So it, it, whether they're rookies or Eighth-year players, third-year players coming from another team, whatever it may be, um, it's important that they um, continue to, to have the evaluation process that we can see what they can do, how much they can handle, uh, and, and then you know if we need to pull back or dial back a little bit, we can. Mike, how important are the six words on the fence to you? And is it is there an extra value to having it out here? It's like a reminder every day when they're walking. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I like it. I, it is. It's. It's what we believe in. It's. It's all those types of things as far as how we want to play. Um, 
And if they look up and, you know, they're, they're glancing around, hopefully that those are some things that they um, can appreciate on how we want to play. Is full tilt, full tilt getting the circle just a graphic design thing or a particular point of that? No, I mean, that's the, I mean full tilt to the tackle is how we want to play defensively. You know, we need 11 guys going to the football. Um, you know, and you can always – identify a loaf if you see a guy that's that's jogging and then all of a sudden somebody breaks a tackle and then they speed up or the ball gets knocked out then they speed up we would rather have it the opposite way where where you're you're running at a certain rate and within you know we usually tell them 10 yards in practice within 10 yards you can kind of figure out if you need to you know throttle down or um, you know continue to to take an angle to the football that's all we ask them is that we go full tilt to the tackle and if somebody makes a tackle uh, then you can start to throttle down. And if not, uh, and your services are needed, uh, then we need you to keep going. What do you think of Dylan's technique with the pads on today? Well, I, I'm going to go watch the tape. I, I think that the, he had a couple good plays. Again, I, I'm trying to watch the entire thing. I don't know if there's something that's going to be glaring. Uh, we talked to him about the punch, talked to him about keeping his head out of there when he punches and, and making sure that we're not lunging. Um, so. I know that there's going to be some, some positive plays. I know that we we got the edge on him one time. You know, he we were able to, you know, he was able to get out there and get the edge for us, and, and we we ran around the edge for some positive yards. But you know, I can't I can't tell you until I go back and watch. Sorry, go ahead. I know you've been trying to get one in. Nicholas Kiki Prayer said he feels you do a particularly good job of building some camaraderie between some of the the offensive rookies. Chig mentioned the same thing. Is there anything specific that you feel like you do or preach to them to make them feel like a, a unit as a, as a rookie core, kind of? Well, they're all in this together. I just try to do what I think is best for the, the team every single day uh, and, and individuals every day. So, um, you know, they are all going through the same thing. They're all trying to figure this thing out, this pro football and where they fit uh, and how they can continue to improve and, you know, the, the you know, the practices and the getting banged up and the installation and the long days and you know we try to put as many people around them give them as many points of contact uh, that we possibly can